Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this video, another video in a series of videos dealing with non-parametric statistics, uh, we're going to concentrate on the Kruskal Wallace, a, a test for the difference between groups when there's more than two groups, and in particular a non-parametric test. Uh, we usually take we only usually want to take this when we violated the assumptions, let's say associated with ANOVA. But the important thing is that the samples are independent of each other. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dive into the, into the actual calculation. Uh, I have got a video before this which actually does the exact same test, but it's under the situation where there's no ties. In this situation here, there are ties in the data, and we have to use a particular modification, a correction factor, to take into consideration the ties. So let's just let's just maybe develop this a little bit. Let's say we have three groups, and uh, we have 20 to 30 year olds. Let's say we have 30 to 40 year olds. And let's say we have 40 to 50 year olds. And what we've done with the three groups is we've asked the groups, okay, we've asked the groups a number of questions. Well, one question, and how much do they spend on lunch? And let's say we ask, let's say, four people in the first group. Uh, let's say they spent, let's say, 20, 25, uh, let's say, 27, and let's say, uh, 20. Uh, let's say, uh, 20 as well, okay? Uh, in the next group, and let's say there was also four people, and let's say they spent uh, 15, uh, 25, uh, let's say 10, and let's say, <clears throat> let's say uh, another, let's say uh, 17, okay? and let's say in the next group, okay, uh, in the next group there was, let's say, uh, 27, they spent 27 as well, and let's say they spent uh, 11 euros. Okay, there was only three in this particular group. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to test whether there's a difference between the, let's say, the characteristics of the 20 to 30 year olds compared to the 30 to 40 year olds, or the 20 to 30 compared to the 40 to 50, or the 20 to 30 to 40 compared to the 40 to 50. There's so many, um, let's say, combinations that we can that we can consider here. Yeah. Uh, or permutations. Yeah, so we want we want to do this. Now the 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 test statistic that's important for this is uh, the H statistic is H is equal to it's twelve divided by the total number of observations across across the data set uh, times the total number of observations plus one. Uh, times well we need to rank each one of the groups okay or we need to do we need to rank all the data relative to each other and then we need to sum up the ranks for each group uh, and then square them values so for each group we're going to have a rank and we're going to square them and we're going to find the ratio of the sum of the ranks the squared ranks relative to the group size okay uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take away three times the total number of observations plus plus one. And this is effectively our test statistic. Okay, but there's a correction factor, correction factor, okay, uh, factor for tires, okay, for tires in the data set. And the correction factor we'll just say that C H yeah. Uh, is equal to one minus uh, for each group of tires. Okay, we find out how many ties there is in the group, and we cube it, and we take away how many ties there is in the group. Okay, and we do that for all of the groups where there are ties, and we divide that by <coughs> the total number of observations in the data set n cubed minus n. Okay, so this is the correction factor. So there's just a little bit of maths involved in this. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do, we'll define the hypothesis, the five stage, uh, the five stage process in a moment. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to rank all of these observations relative to each other. So let's call this group A, B, and C, uh, and we're going to find the smallest element first of all, which is the 11, and the 11 is in group C. We're going to keep track of the observation with the group. The next smallest element uh, is the is oh the smallest element is actually the 10 here, which is in group the 10 is in group B. Then it's the 11 is in group C. Then it's the 15 is in group B. Okay, uh, then we have it's the 17. Okay, which is also in group B. Uh, then we have, I suppose, we have the 20 here. So we have the 20, which is in group A, okay? followed by this 20 here, which is also in group A. Okay? Then we have 25 here, which is in group A. We have a 25 here, which is in, which is in group, which is in group B. Okay? Uh, we then have a 27, which is in group A. We have a 27, which is in group C, and we have a final 27, which is also in group C. But the important thing here is let's let's actually sum up the ranks. Okay, actually, 
uh, excuse me. Uh, the important thing here is to sum up the ranks associated with the, associated with the groups themselves. Okay, uh, but what we need to do is we need to distribute yeah the ranks when there is actually pairs. So you can see that the situation where we have pairs, we have pairs here. Okay, we have repeated values here. Uh, we have repeated values here and we have repeated values here. So let's rank the, rank the values from smallest to largest. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. And now let's distribute the ranks that are here uh, across both across both of these particular groups. So actually, this gets a rank of 5, this gets a rank of 6. The average of them ranks is 5.5. .5. So the actual rank associated with a value of 20 is actually 5.5. .5. Uh, this... 25 has a rank of 7, this 25 has a rank of 8, uh, the average of them two is 7.5. In other words, the 25s are all ranked at position 7.5. Okay? And then what we have here is we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have the 9 uh, plus the 10 plus the 11. Each one of these have a different rank so far, okay? But what we really have is we have, we have 20, uh, which is the, the, the 9 and the 10 gives us 19, uh, and the the, the 11 gives us 30, and 30 divided by 3 gives us a 10. So each one of these is ranked at position at position 10. And now we proceed to sum up the ranks for the groups. So the ranks for group A are, well, where's the A's? It's the 5, the 6, the 7, and the 9. So it's the 5 plus the 6 plus the 7 plus the 9. Okay. The ranks for group B okay, uh, are, well, I suppose it's the 1, the 3, the 